Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 20. We're going to be using Fabio Quattraro right here in the Doha GP or Qatar 2 and we're going to be discussing the races from just yesterday. We're going to be discussing Moto3, Moto2 and MotoGP. So be warned there will be spoilers for today's or yesterday's Grand Prix so probably hang on watching this video until you've watched the actual Grand Prix. So for those who have left the room we can now continue. So Moto3 starting off at the bottom, only because it's the beginner's class, if, if you want to call it that, did not disappoint. It was absolutely marvellous. Of course, we had the pit lane starters, Pedro Acosta, Sergio Garcia, all because of them messing around in the qualifying and practice sessions. And I totally agree with this. It's a very fair punishment because it's annoying to watch as a fan to see in qualifying them all geared up and ready to go, you're tense, you're, in, you're watching it and you're ready to do it all to chaos and carnage to unfold and they just sit there waiting for each other to give each other a tow or waiting for the faster rides to come on through so then they can catch a tow from them. I hate that. It's boring, get back to the racing, stop wasting time and let's do it. So I really appreciate the way that they punish them for that. However, the punishment <laughs> for Pedro Acosta and Romano Fanati and a few others they started from pit lane, and it did not deter them. As true and behold, Pedro Acosta ended up going from the pit lane, carving his way through all of the riders in front of him, and still having enough speed to get away to the front and end up winning the Grand Prix. Absolutely unbelievable stuff. We've seen Darren Minder do it on the same motorcycle a couple of years back in Jerez, but he started 32nd. Pedro Acosta did it starting at the back of the grid on pit lane. Unbelievable. I, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it myself. It was absolutely awesome stuff. Of course, your Pedro Acosta win was very, very closely almost didn't happen because Darren Binder was hot on his tail and he was also equally just as good. So I'm really pleased to see Darren Binder just jump on the uh, Petronas Sprinter Honda and just look extremely good. So I'm pleased to see him competitive as well. He has been really good through pre-season and here again in Qatar and then Doha. Good stuff from Darren Binder. Nicolo Antonelli getting back on the podium was awesome to see as well. I do feel like Nicolo Antonelli was sort of on the edge of his career a little bit because everyone's sort of falling out of love with him because he's not producing. But it's good to see him back up there and proving the haters wrong. Antonelli is a great rider, he just needs the, the right bike and he'll do it. Of course, big talking point as well was Jeremy Alcoba and John McPhee coming together as Jeremy Alcoba crashed and taking out John McPhee. A little bit of fisticuffs afterwards, of course, and tensions are high and John McPhee is not having the best of times at the minute on board that Honda and there's a few issues, of course, because he didn't finish the first race because of getting taken out and then getting taken out the second race. I can see that's being a bit of an issue for him, but both men have been penalised for the next race due to this fiasco. John McPhee will start from pit lane and so will Jeremy. However, John McPhee will have a 10 second further penalty added so he'll have to wait for everyone to get past, and then another further set, 10 seconds. Which I think is totally fair, because I don't think someone my age should be kicking someone who's only 18 or 16. I think that's completely irresponsible. I, I don't believe in any sense of uh, fighting or any combat during something that isn't meant actually physical like that. But anyway, moving on. We'll discuss that in the comments section down below. Moving on to Moto2, Sam Lowe's versus Remy Gardner versus Marco Betzeki versus Raul Fernandez. Sam Lowe's absolutely brilliant once again. He has been terrific here in Qatar. He's been brilliant on board that Mark VDS machine. And Remy Gardner jumped onto that Calyx and just instantly inserted himself to be a championship contender. Really pleased to see Remy competitive. Even Raul Fernandez from Moto3 jumps up to Moto2. Doesn't even look like he's missed a beat. Brilliant stuff from him. A little bit disappointing for Marco Betzeki, to be honest with you. I really expected him to come out just thrashing everyone and just giving it his 100%. But it's early days yet, of course. But the second race, same as the first race, fourth place, just missing out on the podium by a couple of a uh, couple of laps. But ultimately, the race between Sam Lowe's and Remy Gardner was really good. Now, the difference between Moto3 and Moto2 is Moto3 is carnage and it never stops. Moto2 is your thinking man's game. Moto2 had a very calm but pressured environment at the same time, where Remy was constantly pushing Sam Lowe's, constantly getting into his rear tyre, constantly trying to think where he can make a lunge, 
But Sam Lowe's was just so good. He really didn't batter an eyelid, and Sam Lowe's didn't even look as comfortable as he did the week before. The bike squirmed around a little bit, it looked a little bit out of shape, and Remy definitely, definitely took advantage of that a couple of times. But ultimately, it just didn't happen. But these guys to stop didn't stop changing and exchanging leather, uh, exchanging fastest lap times until the very end. The very fastest lap of the race was set right there at the death, as Remy Gardner just finished the tenth or two just behind Sam Lowe's. I really wanted Remy to get Sam Lowe's, and I know you might be thinking, "Wait, Sam Lowe's? You, you British? You know patriotism and all that?" But no, Remy Gardner really deserved that one for the way he showed it. He showed serious gumption and awe to just go for that one. M major props to Remy Gardner. I'm super pleased with his progression. I cannot wait to see what else is in store. So quick mention as well, if you are an American supporter, you probably don't want to hear this again, but Cameron Bobier, Joe Roberts, both crashed out. Really tough times for the, both the American boys. I expected better from Joe Roberts at least. It looked like his crash was a weird one. He got onto the rumble strip towards uh, turn 15 and just skittled himself out the Grand Prix. Silly mistake. Good stuff from the rookies. We had a former Moto3 grid, basically of Ayagura, Stefano Manzi, Celestino Vietti, and uh, Tony Arbolino was there, Fabio Di Giantonio, and of course Aaron Canet. Or Aaron Canet actually f fell out of the race, but uh, it was good to see the Moto3, now Moto2 boys, having a bit of a scrap in the middle of the pack. So I'm going to move on now to MotoGP, because I feel like there's a lot to cover, and I'd we need as much time as possible, ideally. So we're going to start off with Jorge Martin taking the pole position in qualifying on Saturday. He was absolutely awesome on board that Ducati, and he has been since he jumped on it. Johan Zarco took second place in the uh, qualifying session, and ultimately still ended up taking second place in the Grand Prix itself. So Johan Zarco, for the very first time, is our championship leader. Awesome to see the Frenchman there, because... Of course, he's had a bad time, and now he's finally competitive again. He's enjoying it. He's having a good time. Really pleased to see Johan Zarco. Another mature ride from him on Sunday. Sitting behind his teammate, as Jorge Martin, led for 18 laps of the Grand Prix on Sunday. Now, I expected him to drop off. The media expected him to drop off, but he didn't. 18 laps Jorge Martin led that Grand Prix for. Brilliant stuff. And, of course, you've probably figured out already, since I'm using Fabio Quattararo here today, that yes, Fabio Quattararo won the Grand Prix of Doha. However, his race was a carbon or similar copy to what Maverick Vinales did the week prior. In the middle of the pack, sort of biding the time, getting into a bit of a scrap, but not too much. Carving the way through, getting to the front, and trying to break the toe or the slipstream from the Ducatis. Now, when I say breaking the slipstream, the Ducatis obviously don't need the slipstream. But they were in the infield section, they were just so much quicker than the Ducatis. But major props to Jorge Martin on that Ducati. He still threw it about to try and keep up with the Yamahas, which was very impressive. But all the Yamaha need is just to get five tenths ahead for the straight, so then they can't catch them on the brakes. And that's what he did. And Fabio Quattraro was brilliant. He really impressed me. I've always been critical of Fabio Quattraro because I think he's extremely inconsistent. But I'm pleased to see that both Yamahas, because I am Team Yamaha at the end of the day, was very good. They were very good this two weekends. Now, I can't say that for the all the Yamahas, of course, because Rossi and Morbidelli are not having the same success. Rossi struggling with rear tyre grip constantly. Franco just not... He does not look the same guy. He looks completely different. So something's happened in the team. Something's not gone right with the bike, of course. He had a lot of problems in practice where the engine was failing. Tough times for the Petronas boys, but I'm sure they'll bounce back. I'm still not convinced that Yamaha are the team to beat because they are still very inconsistent. Who knows what's going to happen in Portimao. Fingers crossed I'm wrong because I love my Yamahas, but we'll soon see. Moving on to the Suzukis. Alex Rins. Brilliant stuff from him. He was right up there with the best of them, giving it everything he's got. Of course, Joanne Mir was just waiting for his opportunity to come through the pack as well. But I'm pleased to see Alex Rins is up there. Alex Rins is still my pick for the championship. This is not a Suzuki track, really. So, good to see him up there and fighting. And I'm still happy to see... Alex Rins, and I'm still happy to say he's in my championship contention. But moving on to the other Suzuki rider, of Joan Mir, not quite the best race for him. Ultimately only finishes in 7th place, and it's a bit of a surprise considering he just barely missed out on the podium just a week ago. But big talking point is between him and Jack Miller, the factory Ducati rider. A little bit of a collision into turn 11, and then I think it might actually, sorry, it might be turn 10. Joan Mir 
went up on the inside of uh, Jack Miller. It was an audacious lunge, to be honest with you. I, I don't really think it was a good idea, but he did get through and sort of wave the leg to apologise. Fair enough. Just because you apologise doesn't mean it's right, but still, I understand these are two very confident men fighting in this uh, World Championship. And Jack Miller responded in a quite a negative way, actually, and it, it looks like it from the outside. Of course, I don't know Jack Miller personally, but he looked like he took a glance to see where Jack, uh, John Muir was in the final corner at the straight, and then beelined for him across the track. Now, it could have been just sort of a warning thing, or just to get close to him, to point at him, to say, Oi, pack it in. No, I'm not sure. But there was a pretty hefty collision, and there was a couple of uh, gesticulation from Jack Miller and Joanne Mia. So I don't think we've heard the end of that. Joanne Mia wants him to be punished, and Jack Miller sort of shrugged the whole thing off. So I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment section down below about that one. I'm eager to see what you think. But also, moving across the garage now to other Ducati rider, Pekko Banyaya. Set the fast lap of the Grand Prix. He looks extremely good. Made a little bit of a mistake behind Joan Zarco. And then we didn't really see him again. So ultimately, I'm going to say disappointing for the factory Ducati boys. De very much so. They have been completely outshined by Jorge Martin and Zarco. The Pramac team, the satellite team, of course. So I think they've got a lot of work to do. And I think that's only going to build to the pressure of Jack Miller and uh, Pekko Banyaya. Got to quickly mention as well, because I was going to pick Alicia Spargo for this particular race to do the video on, but ultimately I chose Fabio, of course. Alicia Spargo was up into second place early on in the Grand Prix. That is an Aprilia, ladies and gentlemen, so incredible job from Alicia Spargo and uh, Lorenzo Savadori to get that Aprilia working. Really, really good stuff to see. It would have been nice touching tribute to get him up on the podium for Fausto Grassini, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Sort of fell off towards the end of the race. But a great finish for him to be finishing 10th place. Because of course that Prilia last year, the year before, was a joke. So it's great to see him competitive. It's good to see Alicia Spargo competitive. And it's also great to see Aprilia. And there's just another manufacturer up there. Maverick Vinales, of course, if you are wondering, did not have the same success as last week. He looked a little bit lost compared to the previous week. He looked a little bit frustrated in the pits. And didn't look comfortable at all. It was Fabio who took all the spoils. And uh, it was a strange one. But it, this was the same thing as last year. It just It scares me a little bit. Because last year, Fabio would do great. Maverick, Rossi, Mobidelli would do bad. Next week, Frankie and Rossi would do great. Vinales and Fabio would struggle. The next week after that, Maverick would do well. Everyone else would struggle. So that's obviously just as unreliable as always. But it's it's been an interesting one. The Hondas have said that they cannot wait to get out of MotoGP's uh, Qatar Grand Prix. And I'm not surprised because they've had some pretty bad results. Just not good weekends for them. But they always do tend to struggle. Of course, the, uh, the heroes, the heroics of Marquez usually fights the Honda here in Qatar. But still, it didn't happen for this week. Apparently, we're expecting Marquez back next time out in Portimao. But until that point, we'll soon see. Super, super good races to the weekend. Moto3, Moto2, MotoGP, absolutely awesome. Super pleased to be uh, having MotoGP back and watching that on the Sundays. So those are my lap times for the Sail International Circuit on board the Yamaha. Of course, this is just a bit of background filler while we had the discussion. But upon that note, guys, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Race upload. And upon that note, guys, I will see you next time. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.